Okay, y'all, so we made it almost to the top and we have to turn around. We didn't even get to go to the top. They're forcing everybody down and they're dogmatic about it. They keep yelling about it. They won't even let us go like a little bit and just sit by the trees. They're making us completely get off the mountain. Plankinton, South Dakota, and most of y'all probably haven't heard of Plankinton, South Dakota, just like we haven't before we got here, but it's middle of nowhere, South Dakota, literally. Um, we are headed to Rapid City. We're going to get to hang out with our family. Um, Matthew's parents are flying in. My mom is flying in, so it should be fun. Mm -hmm. um, but when we leave Rapid City, we are coming back to Plankinton. Because would y'all believe it if we told you that something else broke? Mm-hmm. I know you're shocked. But we will let y'all know. We will give y'all all the deets of why we're coming back to Plankinton and what broke this time. All right. You ready to go? I'm ready to go. Let's get it. In one half mile, arrive at Heartland RV Park and Cabins on the right. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna fall off the stairs, it's windy. <laughs> All right, y'all, I'm gonna give you a site tour of our site at Heartland RV Park and Campground here in South Dakota. Actually, Rapid City, South Dakota, but they're saying it's Hermosa. The site that we picked is 76 feet long. Our truck's 21 feet, the RV is 36 feet. We have plenty of room for the truck. The hookups are in the middle of the site and they have it all outlined with gravel. They're gravel sites. We're site 702. And we got 50 amp. We got sewer and we got water. We parked kind of close to the back so we had more room up front for the truck. And you get a fire ring and a picnic table. And then over there, they also can fill your propane for you. It's a really nice park and we've enjoyed it so far. Look at all of the rolling hills, y'all. So nice. Hey, we are on our way to the airport to pick up family. And there's such a big airport too in Rapid City, let me tell you. I know, we haven't been before, but we'll see if it's smaller or bigger than Chattanooga because we have been to the Chattanooga airport. And that's a nice airport. Yeah, we liked it. Mm -hmm. Look yeah. at all the hills. Look how neat this airport is. There we are. So we were really excited about this Rapid City Black Hills trip and spending time with our family. Our first day there was a Saturday and we got to visit Custard State Park and we got to do the wildlife loop. So we had gotten there maybe between 9 and 10 a.m. in the morning, still hoping to see some animals. So we started our little wildlife tour in the truck and we started to see what was it, one or two buffalo? Yeah, like small groups of buffalo like a big bull and his followers or whatever but they were really close to the road and that was nice and the scenery was really nice and they have um trails off well roads not trails roads off of the wildlife loop that you can take and i think we took one a dirt road yeah so every time we saw buffalo we would count how many buffalo we saw and we did see some buffalo off of those dirt roads that we took mm -hmm. um so that was day one at custard state park um we loved the wildlife loop so much that um we decided to go back for a second uh time and the 
owner of the B&B where our family was staying suggested, it was a rainy day, and she's like, well, why don't you go back to Custer State Park? The animals will be out. They like the rain. And mm -hmm. so one afternoon it was raining, and we got to go back to Custer State Park, and Google let us in like some back way. <laughs> Yeah, we came in on the side. I don't even know what road it was, but it was an official entrance, but it wasn't like the main part of the entrance. And we, and once we got closer to the wildlife loop, we saw our first herd. We finally got to see a herd of buffalo. Like a hundred head or more. Yeah, and so everybody's like, oh, well, that's nice. Um, we saw our herd. It's probably not going to get better than that. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, let's just drive the loop a little bit more and see. And we did. And we saw four more herds, y'all, yep. buffalo. So I think in total, we saw over 500 something buffalo. And what did they say the count was in Custer State Park? There is over a thousand it might be way more than that too i don't remember now but i think it was at least over a thousand it might have been 1700 you have to look Something it up like that so we knew there were more in there but it was amazing seeing those herds and then yeah and the herds in one of them the first herd we saw they kept inching their way up towards the road as they were grazing so it was like they got closer instead of farther away and then around one of the turns we saw the burrowing the begging burrows. The begging burrows. That's what it is. I mean, I got that backwards. Now, the begging burrows are just exactly what it sounds like. They're burrows and they beg. If you roll down your window, they will stick their schnoz right inside their window and say hi and figure out if you're going to feed them. We didn't feed them. I don't even know if you're supposed to, but we didn't. But what they do is when they notice you, they start. a couple of their leaders will start walking towards you. And so we went past them and then looked back upon them walking down the road and they walked in like a little herd, a little group. All right, y'all look at this. It's the begging burrows. You see how they're up there in the middle of the road? They block you. Can you see that? Look at that. And there's two over here that want nothing to do with it. You see the two under the tree right over there? Now look right down there. They're just <laughs> like they're giving that car an escort. Look at that. <laughs> That's too funny. They want food. And then there's these guys. But if you go to the Black Hills, do not miss Custer State Park. And mm -hmm. um, if you plan on being there a while, I would definitely fork out the money and get the annual pass so you can go like early in the morning or late in the evening or on a rainy day, you know, because each time you go is a different experience. And we went twice and it was a different experience each time. Yep. And we also want to do some hiking. So hopefully when we're back in the Black Hills area, we can hike some of those trails. Don't pet the fluffy cows. So on our first day, which was Saturday, when we went to Custer State Park, in the afternoon, I think it was 3 or 4, we decided to leave Custer State Park and drive the Needles Highway. Um, probably on a Saturday afternoon wasn't the best idea because it was really crowded, y'all. I mean, like the road is not that big and it probably could have been busier, but it was a little busy for my comfort, especially when you got up close to the pinnacles and stuff. People wanted to park on the side of the road, on both sides of the road, and it's two-way traffic, so we're trying to maneuver, or he's driving, <laughs> this big, our big truck through there and stuff like that. And yes, you can take an F-350 single rear-wheel drive truck through Needles Highway. Yep, and we're on the 20-inch tires and everything, or 20-inch wheels, and uh, we fit just fine. We folded in the mirrors. I don't know if we sh needed to fold in the mirrors, but I did anyways for my peace of mind, and we fit just fine. I mean, I wouldn't take a nap as you're driving through there. You've got to watch both sides, but then what happened when we got through the tightest squeeze, the main needle up in tunnel up in the pinnacles. That, I think it was the needles tunnel. Well, we were behind this car and it kept back, it would, it would 
do like a what is what's the word I'm looking for like a false start yeah and he's like nope and then it would back up and it did that like five or six times and then because cars I'm like seriously are they not gonna take turns does that side just think that they get to keep coming and we have to sit here and finally the car was able to go through and we waited till they went through and then you could see people on the other side they're like waving so i don't know <laughs> if they were stopping traffic on the other side if they were the official tunnel people or just <laughs> tourists i don't know but matthew was concentrating driving through there and we just wanted to get through but you see all the time these people get out and take videos and pictures but we weren't able to do that because it was just so crowded and we highly recommend if you are able to to go in the morning time and probably during the week as well but mm -hmm. we got through needles highway and there was a crowd i think a lot of people just like to park there and, and they want to watch but yeah. it also boogers up the roads because it's a two-way road but the roads are very narrow because you're trying to fit oh, yeah. through that and everything so don't that, bring your rv up there <laughs> no um that was really neat and on the way back down you got to go through are they called the pigtail bridges yeah bridges i think they're wooden bridges and they're bridges that curve and at one point there's a bridge that goes underneath another bridge as they're both curving it's really neat and there was another road called iron mountain road mm -hmm. I, I don't know if it had one or two tunnels but they made a tunnel to where you go through it and it pictures um mount rushmore mount rushmore but it um puts it perfectly it didn't turn out well on film, but there's three tunnels and you go through the first and the third tunnel and it does exactly what Sean said. It frames Mount Rushmore perfectly. You just want to stop and watch it and then you realize there are people behind you so you got to keep going. But I would go north on that road in order to see that. Yeah. Don't go south, you'll, lose, you'll miss the experience. We got to visit the Badlands National Park and oh my goodness, on that day, I think that was the beginning before this rainstorm came through and it was windy oh, yeah. where the gust up to 50 that day i don't remember i don't know but we were blown around it was just so amazing um the badlands and you can walk out on the tops of the hills and it was really windy and you could see in some of those places people had made little trails that you could walk down into in fact at one of the places we stopped they had like two or three trails you could pick and we did two one was like mm -hmm. a door trail and a window trail and that was neat it was almost like you were walking on the surface of the moon kind of thing like that's what it looks like it really did let's see are we on the moon or are we in the badlands there's four That's number four. There's five. Getting towards the end of the trail. This is like walking on the moon. Not that I walked on the moon, but it probably feels the same. Could you imagine a really creepy sci-fi movie or horror movie out here? All right, how do we get to this last one? All right, let's show you the view. Well, let's save it for the very end of the trail. All right, this is the door trail near the, I guess maybe the northernmost entrance to the Badlands National Park. There's a door trail, a window trail. This is the door trail. And here's the end of the trail. And this, is your Badlands National Park.
and then um, at the end we found the prairie dog. Prairie dog town, yeah. That was really neat, and we also saw some buffalo mixed in with them too, but um, that was our first experience getting to see the prairie dogs, and they like run in their hole, and they run out, and they, and they like to chase each other, and they like to make their cute little noises and stuff like that, so um, yes, we really enjoyed that. Good morning, y'all. Guess what we're doing? We're walking up Crazy Horse called the Vopes March and you can only do it twice a year. Yep, two days in June and two days in the fall. Not sure what month. So we happened to be here during this time and we couldn't pass it up. So nope. we're really excited about it. It's like three dollars a person to do. And like we... you get to walk on Crazy Horse. So. Yeah, we're excited. We'll try to film and show as much as we can, especially when we get up there on the mountain. Yep, we'll bring you with us. <laughs> All right, y'all see that? the side of the unfinished Crazy Horse Monument. How's Sean doing? He's a tough hike, y'all. I thought it was just, well, you just, what, gradually mosey up the mountain. Not so gradual, is it? No. <laughs> but do you like it? Yeah. Having it's, fun? It's a neat experience. Are you having fun? I am. And it must be in the low 60s right now. The weather is perfect. It's just great. That looks like something out of Indiana Jones, honestly. And that's where we're going. Okay, y'all, so we made it almost to the top and we have to turn around. We didn't even get to go to the top. There's a lightning. They're forcing everybody down and they're dogmatic about it. They keep yelling about it. They won't even let us go like a little bit and just sit by the trees. They're making us completely get off the mountain and I don't even know if we're going to get to come back up because they said once they get a lightning strike they have to start the count from 30 minutes. All right y'all look at the sky. That's why they're making us leave. We're almost to the top. <laughs> we had a we traveled a long way. So we are hiking around the bottom part of Devil's Tower. I think it's like a 1.3 mile um, hike around. We're here with our family. Matthew's leading the pack or he'd be back here with me. I gotta, you know, keep everybody in line. So I'm kind of at the back of the line. I'm not in the back anymore. I'm in the front. Now Matthew's walking by me. Hello. This is amazing when you like look up at it. Yep. Well, look at this. We got an overlook. Oh, y'all. Let's go see the overlook. All right, y'all. Let's see what we see. All right, here is Devil's Tower up close and personal. You don't get any closer unless you come here. There you are. So when we left Devil's Tower, there was this road, was it called like Scenic Loop or something? The road looked kind of sketchy. <laughs> It like, had a lot of ruts. You didn't want to take it. And I'm yeah. like, well, let's take it. And we took it. And it took us to the most amazing mm -hmm. place to see Devil's Tower. Because we thought the best place to see Devil's Tower was on the way in there. Because we saw people stopping on the way in there by, like, these longhorn cows and buffalo. They had them all and horses all in this thing. But when we saw this, and there was, like, only one other vehicle there. And then when we were there, only one or two more came in. It was like the best spot, y'all, to mm -hmm. um, see Devil's Tower and not be crowded and take however many photos you want to take without a million of your closest friends <laughs> in the photo with you. What did you think about that spot? It was really an amazing find because, like she said, you're sort of all by yourself. It was a beautiful frame of Devil's Tower. You don't have a hundred other cars trying to crowd you out and stalk your spot and stuff like that. It's just as if you walked through, the way it looked is if you walked through the wilderness and here it is and you just discovered it. That's the way it looked. And that was so much better than even, we liked walking around the base of it. That was fun, honestly, but it was so much better than that because it looked like just a natural find. And they also have a trailhead 
on that on that road oh, too. Yeah. I think there were two trails by the Devil's Tower, which we took the one mm -hmm. that walked around the base, and then there was another one. But then where we took this scenic, sketchy road, <laughs> there's a trailhead off of that. And then when we were coming out, then a truck saw us come out, and they're like, "Why are they coming out? I want to go in there." So they turned in there after we left. So yep. that's kind of how it is. You want to be like, "Well, why are they coming out?" We've kind of discovered that with some roads when we see people do that so keep a lookout for other vehicles and see what they do and if your vehicle can make it down some of these roads because we saw a, vi a car a sedan coming out but it was really ruddy so just if you have a low clearance vehicle please be careful okay y'all next is Mount Rushmore and um so we got up there and it was like wow it's mount rushmore i mean you know y'all have seen the videos and the pictures and stuff but to see it in person was just kind of surreal yeah it's really something else um but they have a, a trail that takes you right under the noses of the uh the mount rushmore and i don't know if that's called the president's trail or what it's called but it we took be. we took that twice you can go either way the first way you go down the stairs and then when you leave you have to go up some stairs and then we decided to take the second way because we want to go up all them stairs because we wanted some <laughs> exercise and we wanted to torture ourselves and when we were there which was the very beginning of june um we did not have to bring a supper with us. They had a cafeteria that was open. And I said, you know what? I want to sit on the outside. Okay, y'all. So we are eating supper. There's Matthew. He got a cheeseburger with fries. I got a chili dog with fries. But that is not the best part. Matthew, should I show him what the best part is? It's over there. Look, y'all. We are getting to eat in front of Mount Rushmore. How cool is that? But the next neatest thing is they have a little ice cream shop and you can get ice cream. And I got the Thomas, is it Thomas Jefferson's ice yep. cream? His, um, he had a vanilla ice cream recipe that they um, keep making off of his recipe. So I got to try some Thomas Jefferson ice cream. Did you like it? It was very good. It was cold, but I was still willing to eat it. All right, y'all, there's Mount Rushmore straight ahead, and we're fixing to take a four-mile trail. That's right. Did you know that there was a four-mile hiking trail right outside of Mount Rushmore Memorial? It's called the Blackberry Trail. Yep. Here's the trail head, and over there is Mount Rushmore and the parking area, so it's across the street. I'm assuming you can take horses on this trail because I see horse poop. I did not bring my hiking stick, y'all. I did not wear my hiking boots, so I don't know how successful this is going to be. It's two miles out and back, and so far it's a pretty decent trail. Nice gravel trail. What is all trails rate this? Moderate. Oh, no. Moderate's not good. Moderate's just fine. All right, y'all. There goes Sean. She's getting a head start. Look at this. Would you believe that this is... I won't say the backside of Mount Rushmore, it's across the street from Mount Rushmore. Obviously there have been many horses on this trail. Ask me how I know. Because they left gifts. And uh, But there's nobody here right now. It's after 5 o'clock. So now we get to hike all this by ourselves. And I know that seems to be a reoccurring theme with us. What can I say? We're just blessed. We like hiking with other people, but in terms of it being crowded, nah, rather not have it crowded. Hey y'all, it's me and- It is, it's you? I say this all the time. This is amazing and this is South Dakota. What do y'all think about when you think of South Dakota? Yeah. I, I grew up in the South and you know, the, the place to go is the Smoky Mountains. <laughs> You, I couldn't even have told you maybe what South Dakota looks like. This is South Dakota. I mean, can y'all believe this for people that have never been here, that this is South Dakota? Yeah, and then you go to the eastern half of South Dakota, and what do you get? In the eastern half of South Dakota, you get flat, just flat. East of the Missouri River, it's just flat. I hate to break it to you. You cross <laughs> west of the Missouri, and you start, ew, you start <laughs> heading towards, um, well, the Black Hills, 
and it becomes like this. I mean, this could very well, we could be in the middle of Colorado right now, couldn't we? Yeah, so like Matthew was saying, we just, our first experience with South Dakota was Plankinton, flat. It's just nothing but flat plains. And we're like, really? Well, at least I was. I was like, really, this is South Dakota? And then you come here. <laughs> it drastically changed. Look at this down here. They, oh. The rock all up in this area is really shiny. You see how this sparkles in the light? They have a lot of this. Don't ask me what it is. I wish I could point to it. Oh, this is a blah, blah, blah. I don't know. That's called. It's just shiny. You don't know either. According to Sean, it's a glitter rock. So okay. y'all girls that like glitter, come to South Dakota. You can see a glitter rock. Listen. And Matthew loves glitter, by All y'all geologists out there, you can just quit your jobs now because we done solved it. This is a glitter rock. Yeah. <laughs> by the, by, what is it again? Where are we at? I, Sparkle Falls, old. I don't know. We're on the back side of Mount Rushmore. Rushmore. That's it. <laughs> oh, and here, here y'all, here's a trivia question for y'all. Tell us in the comments below what the four presidents are on Mount Rushmore while I attempt to go down this giant step. And get them right in order from left to right. Yeah, leave us a comment here. I need to get down. If you get all four presidents right in order, you get brownie points. We're not baking your brownies, though. Just the points. <laughs> all right, y'all. Do y'all want to see something amazing? Look at this. Zoom in on it. Entering the Mount Rushmore National Memorial. You just head that way. So cool. And you know what I just realized? Here's your sign. What did you realize? It is not four miles down and back. It is four miles down and four miles back. Oops. <laughs> he said it was only four miles. That's what it said. Usually it's a down and back. I get. I for. I just assumed if there's a point A and a point B, they always want you to start back and end up at your point A again. But they didn't do that this time. You go from point A to point B and then teleport back to point A or something. Well, how do they expect you to get back up? I don't know, but we're about a fourth of the way to Horse Lake. So I propose we go, this is an eight mile hike. I propose <laughs> we go to two miles and then double back. What do you think? We can keep going a little longer. I okay. don't know. Oh, the quality of the trail has dramatically just changed. Because we're not in the, uh, what, Mount Rushmore Memorial Forest Highway anymore. <laughs> Scott, I agree. I, you just made up a mouthful. I probably no, butchered that. Mount Rushmore <laughs> National Monument area. We're not in that area. No, y'all. As soon as you hit that sign, uh -huh. show them what it looks like. Mud. It's, it's not a bad trail, but it's just mud. It's not wide. It's not developed. It's this is mud. a trail you need to start early yeah. so you can get it done. Maybe that's why we don't see anybody. Or maybe that's why people take the horses because, oh. Ooh. Yeah, we may oh. be done. Ew, I stink. All too. right, y'all, y'all have to stay tuned anymore. Y'all know what we did. We turn around. But I want to go down here and see this creek and see, are we supposed to cross the creek? Ooh, that, that's stinky. Um, yeah, and I didn't bring my walking stick. Look how pretty this is. Oh, wow. What should we do? I see another sign up there. Black Elk Wilderness, Black Hills National Forest. Uh-huh. I see we go for it. I better not fall on my butt. Now, now it's me holding the camera trying to make it across the creek. There's mud on the other side. Were you dancing a jig? Were you hush? <laughs> now if it had really come a storm, then um the rocks might have been covered, you know, so Let's get away from these flies. Which way are you supposed to go? To the right. What's, <clears throat> what's that way? Since Another we, trail. We're going to the one on the right. But since we can't do the whole trail, is the trail shorter to the left? Oh, no. Look. We're the blue <gasps> dot. Yeah. If we go to the left, you could get lost for days back here. Oh. That goes all the way to Iron Mountain. Y'all, I guess that means we definitely need to come back to this area after Plankington. Yeah. 